Jason here from Tendy Concepts. We're, we're trade suppliers for the graphic arts industry, so people like sign companies, print companies, um, uh, people who, who supply exhibition stands and things like that, uh, graphic designers uh, and event agencies and things like that. So we're trade suppliers for them. Uh, today I wanted to show you guys something that I've been wanting to do for a long time now, and that's uh, touch on the use of our tension fabric templates. Uh, so you would have seen these, uh, some people call them media walls, expo stands, backdrops, uh, step and repeat walls. I'm going to do this in Illustrator uh, because Illustrator is probably the most widely used uh, design program on the planet uh, in the design industry. And our typical client, as I said, are, are trade clients. So, you know, people like sign companies, print companies, um, design agencies. So uh, our typical client should already know the basics of uh, Illustrator. Uh, I will do possibly another video in the future using uh, Photoshop, but today I want to concentrate on Illustrator. And basically today I'm not going to show you good design, bad design or anything like that. I'm simply going to show you what the guidelines in our templates do and some things you should uh, try and avoid. Uh, do's and don'ts basically. Uh, let's get into it. So the product we're going to use today, or the template we're going to use today, is for our three metre straight wall. Uh, this is probably one of our most common uh, products, and it's also, you know, a quite simple one. So I can show you the ins and outs of these guidelines and things. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the template FAF31, uh, and the product that we're that we're designing here today is 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 one of these tension fabric walls. Okay, so it's just a fabric sleeve that slides over, slides over a, an aluminium frame. You've probably seen one of these if you're looking at this video. Okay. So we've got our template open. Um, let's talk about the three main things here uh, as far as guidelines and dimensions go. Uh, we have three main dimensions. We have graphic size with bleed. Okay, and this is the artboard size. Okay, so graphic size with bleed is the artboard size. Now it's very important guys that if you open up your our template like this and, um, and it doesn't look like this, if it doesn't have this bleed, then it's opened up incorrectly. What we see sometimes is people in Photoshop or Illustrator have their settings adjusted so that it opens up to the, to, to the closest uh, object. So, If your template has opened more like this, then that's incorrect. Okay, so it's got to look like this. We do it correctly. Now the second thing we want to look at is um, whether you've got the correct template open. So we sell uh, two models of this, these straight walls, and one with round corners like this, which is the original type, and we also sell them with square corners. So just use the correct template. This dashed line is actually what we're going to use to cut. Uh, it can also be called um, the visual area because this is exactly what you're going to see. So if we have a look at our, our product here. Right. So this dashed line is actually the, the edge of this actual product. Okay. So anything outside of this dashed line is going to get cut off and not not seen anything inside of that dashed line is going to get seen okay now in the the third dimension that we have is what we call a safe area now in some of our uh, templates you're going to see this called as um, uh, primary image area it just depends it's just a, what we've called it at the time when we created the templates so safe area primary image area uh, whatever it's uh, whatever it's uh, called but that's this red line okay so the solid red line okay so what is the purpose of this red line? And remember guys, this is just a guide. This is just us saying, uh, this is what we reckon, uh, this is where we reckon is a good place to keep all your important things like logos, text, and things like that uh, inside that red line. So that's what it's there for. So if you do have a design which you know, needs to come out a little bit, like, then it's, it's no biggie. Yeah, if it's like that, it's no bigger. This is this is like I said. It's just what we reckon is a good place. 
uh, to do this. Now the reason why we have this so far in, because some people say, oh, it's so, it's so far in. We've got to remember guys that this is stretched fabric. So that end product that I just showed you there, it's stretched fabric. So the closer you get to this edge, the more likely it's going to be that this could possibly warp a little. You know, your text, your fabric is, is going to warp a little. So this distance here is where we know that you're not really gonna have any issues with that. Okay. Okay, so let's move on now to our layers panel. Okay, so we'll open up the layers panel and what you will see here is two layers, uh, artwork and template. Okay, so uh, the template layer has all your information and all your guidelines in it. Okay, so we can turn each, we can turn the info off and each individual, each individual guide off. Okay, so my, my actual preference is when I'm designing these is, is I like to have the, uh, the template layer at the top and what I usually do is I just turn off the text and I'm left with these two guides uh, and then I'll lock that layer. Okay, so now I can't select it and anything I design because we're going to put our design in the artwork layer or below that. Okay, so I can now not select that and I can just go forth and design and I can turn those guides on and off to see how I'm going uh, and as I showed before I can turn each individual guide off if I want. Um, let's design something. Let's first talk about, uh, as I said before, I wanted to de design a few th little things here or show you how some designs work so that I, I can give you an indication of what we commonly see people do incorrectly. Okay, let's take uh, a couple of different designs. The first I want to show you is um, using a photograph as the full background of your product or the full background, full bleed uh, of, of the wall. Okay, so let's uh, grab a photograph. Okay. So what you want to do with your photograph, if you want this to be a full bleed background, you know, uh, photograph to the edge of the to the edge of the visual area or the edge of the product. What you need to do is you need to extend this all the way to the edge of the artboard. Right, so you'll see over here I've got this I've got this extended all the way to the edge of the artboard. Let's just make this a little more manageable. There's control seven and we'll click that to that source. Okay, so if I want this to be to the total edge of the, the, the product, that's how I want it to look uh, all the way to the edge of the artboard. What we don't want and what we see often is firstly, people feel that they need to have this, this image within the safe area. Remember, the safe area is a guide for your text and your, and your logos and a guide only. Um, we, we quite often get artwork with a photographic background where people wanted the image to go all the way to the edge of the product, but they put it within this safe area. Of course, uh, let's just turn off this layer, this safe area. Of course, if you want this white border, Remember, this is the visual area, this is the safe area. If you want this white border, all good. If that's, part of the, if that's what you're planning to do with your design, all good. But if you want it all the way to the edge of the product, you need to go to the artboard, to the edge of the artboard. What else, what, the other thing we don't, uh, don't want is uh, placing this photographic image directly on the cut source, you know, on, the, on the cut line or the visual area guide. So as I said before, we're using stretch fabric here. So within the manufacturing process of where we print stretch fabric and where we press, which is heat uh, the fabric to fixate the ink to the fabric, what we can find during that manufacturing process is we, we sometimes get a, a slight shrinkage or stretch uh, in the fabric. So what can happen, and this is why we need a considerable bleed. What can happen is if you design your design and 
you, you have this directly on the cut sides. What can happen sometimes is it can shrink a little and, and give you a warped white line uh, at the edge of the product. Or we may cut a little bit off. Okay, so that will depend on how much it's stretched. So as I said, during the manufacturing process, we, we can expect sometimes anywhere between you know, five and 15 millimetres of shrink or stretch either way. That's just part and parcel of printing fabric, guys. We can't do anything about it. So again, we want that to the edge of the artboard. Okay, now let's put a logo in here. So with logos and text, as I said, we want to try and keep these within <clears throat> within this safe area. Okay, so it doesn't matter too much if you, yeah, a little bit out, but you certainly, certainly want to try and avoid getting too close to that uh, that visual area or that cut line. Okay, so as, again, as a recommendation, within that safe area. If anything, you know, somewhere between there we can still work with. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna place that there, where I think it's gonna look nice. Let's have a look. I'll turn off that safe area. Okay, so I may even move that more down there. I think it would look nice. <coughs> and again, I'm not. I, this, this tutorial isn't about what looks nice and what doesn't. That's up to you guys. You guys are the designers. Okay, so that's where we sort of want to place you know, logos in within that safe area. Um, anywhere on the page, of course, that depends on your design. Let's add some text. Um, So usually when I'm designing something, I keep the text within within that safe area as well. Okay. Um, if anything, you don't want to sort of come past past here. But you know, we feel that this safe area gives you a nice, good uh, indication of negative or white space for your design anyway. Okay. So that's basically how how this design I want to look. <coughs> Okay, uh, let's talk about some other designs. Quite often what we have, we sell these as, to people as media walls. Uh, and quite often what they will want is, you know, a series of small logos. So typically when I'm designing something like this, personally, um, my preference is, is using the effect tab uh, transform um, and using a transform effect. Oh, there's tons of different ways you can do this and probably more efficient ways, I'm not sure. Um, but this is the way I do it and uh, it gives me the ability to, uh, to separate them with certain distances, with a certain amount of copies. Um, yeah, you can uh, you can adjust the vertical and horizontal distance as you as you as you as you, as you please, and also at a, another instance where you can go vertical and and lay these out as you see fit. Um, the reason I'm but let's say you wanted your media wall or your step and repeat wall um, to have to be staggered and some of the logos off the edge. So I've actually got one up that we're about to print right now, uh, which has been, art's been supplied by a client. So it might be better to just quickly show you this one. So this is what the client has supplied. As you can see, they've, uh, they've uh, put the logos to the edge of the visible area. Um, and that's, that's what they're expecting to receive with the logos. Uh, on the edge of the, the actual product. And you can see they've staggered these in a nice way. It looks quite, it's gonna look really nice when it's up. 
Um, but what I've needed to do is, is to fix this for them uh, because as I said many times is what we actually need for, for a full bleed is for these logos to be extended out here. Okay, so if you want your logos to be cut off like that, you still need to extend these past this visual area. Okay, so we want your art set up like this where the logos extend, you know, at least to the edge of the art board. Okay, so this is correct. Uh, this is not the correct way. Now, of course, we can still print this, but we would have to get uh, the client to take responsibility if these uh, you know, shift or are exactly where they want them, okay? But that's, that's basically how we would need it set up like that as opposed to that, okay? So now let's talk about uh, some solid background and also some th uh, things like some you know, solid stripes or patterned background or patterned stripes, you know, like vector pattern, uh, vector patterns or anything like that. Um, but we'll keep it simple. Um, so let's say you wanted your media wall to be uh, have a, a solid background colour. So let's let, let's make that happen. Uh, I'm going to put that to the back. So what you need to do, here's our, here's our visual area. Uh, what you need to do with your solid background or your pattern background or whatever it is, is again, extend it all the way to the edge of the artboard. We don't want it here on the visual area. Okay, so we don't want it on the visual area like that. Um, If you do want a white border, you can, of course, use the safe area. But if you want your color or your pattern to extend all the way to the edge of your product, you need it to the edge of the artboard as such. Okay. So let's say we wanted a, a, a stripe. Same, same thing, guys. We, we, we want it all the way to the edge of the artboard not to the visual size and not to the safe area. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty certain you're getting the, <laughs> the one of the main problems we have here is people not using the whole artboard like that. Okay. Okay, now let's go through saving your file. Okay, so you have this uh, design laid out the way you want it. Uh, there's a few things that we need to do uh, in regards to saving it. Okay, so the, f the first thing you want to do is you want to outline all your fonts. Okay, so the best way to do that is, is I press Control A to select everything, uh, and then Control Shift O, if you're using PC, that is. And that uh, converts all your fonts to outlines. You can do it in here. Create outlines there, or as I said, Control A to select everything, uh, Control Shift O to create outlines. You want to check that you're in CMYK. You don't want you don't want to save this as RGB. If you do have it set up at RGB currently and you need to change it, um, document color mode, change it to CMYK. To make a print ready file, what we would prefer you to do is turn off the turn off the guides. You can just simply hide the layer. Okay, we don't we don't need them. Uh, we'll we'll check your art. Um, but we don't necessarily need those guides on guides on to show us anything. Okay, so turn them off and let's save it. Now we require a PDF, so we're going to save as. Okay, and we'll just change the name. Right, and we'll save. Okay, so the main thing I want you guys to worry about is this. Okay, in general, as you can see, we've got uh, automatically selected preserve illustrator uh, editing. Okay, so if you are certain, and in most cases, when you get a bit of practice at this, or if you've watched this video and you understand, um, uncheck this. 
as I said, we don't want to edit your file. We don't want to edit it at all. So um, we don't need anything like that. And what this, what unchecking that will do, it will reduce your file size considerably. And that's what we want. We don't, you know, we, we don't want you to have to wait three days for your uh, art to up upload. <laughs> and we don't want to have to spend you know, hours downloading sometimes what we see in, in some cases as well over a gig of file. That's just way too big. We don't need it. And I think I mentioned before that we will touch on resolution in another video. Uh, and file size and, and resolution okay but just trust me uh, you can uncheck that unless you are uncertain about setting this file up correctly but again as I said we'll check it and if we see anything wrong we'll get back to you uh, then the second thing is uh, compression okay so you're gonna have to trust me on this as well we only need this uh, this artboard is set up to actual size okay so if you have a three meter artboard and it's set up to actual size, buy cubic dam sampling and make this 150 ppi. All right. Now you, we know what designers are going to do. We know what uh, um, clients who are, <coughs> who are involved in uh, offset printing and, and stuff like that. Gonna, the first thing they're going to do is 150 ppi, no way, that's too low. Guys, for large format printing, and I'll explain this in another video, that is, work, that is well and truly enough, okay? You're not going to see any quality difference between 150 ppi and 300. All you're going to see is a considerably larger file size. But I'll, I'll touch on that at another time, okay? We don't want any marks and bleeds, okay? All we're going to have to do is take them off. We, we have our own uh, marks that we put, it on, put on for cutting here, so we don't need you to put anything on there. It's, it's just a waste of time. Okay, they're the main things that we're looking at. So let's save this. And bam, we're done. Ask your uh, customer service agent at Tenji uh, your, or your customer service rep uh, where to upload it. Or you, if you're ordering from the website, there's an up upload button. Or like I said, just ask your customer service rep uh, for a Dropbox link or something like that. Okay, and we're pretty much done. Uh, you can follow me on social media at the, at you know Google search or not Google search. You can follow me on on social media or us as Tenji Concepts on Facebook, Insta, um, YouTube. Um, I'm going to be uploading more videos similar to this, and as I said, I'm going to be touching on some of the major issues that we see uh, with guys um, supplying artwork for us and you know, some other bits and pieces that you might be interested in. See you guys.